Aside from viewers of a particularly scary film with an instantly recognisable score, sharks have managed to capture the public's attention for as long as they've been swimming in our oceans. But did you know that we're still discovering more and more about sharks each day? Scientists are continually baffled at what mysteries and discoveries can be found out about the group of elasma branch fish. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be taking a look at three shark mysteries and discoveries. Did Great White Sharks Drive Megalodon to Extinction? If you're a fan of ancient or even mythological creatures, you've probably heard the name Megalodon thrown around here and there. To those who do not know, Megalodon is the name of an extinct shark species that lived on Earth somewhere between 23 to 6 million years ago. The Megalodon is renowned for its massive size. Believe it or not, the Otodus Megalodon is believed to have reached lengths of up to 50 feet long. Although the Megalodon wasn't the only giant shark to swim in the Earth's early oceans, it was by far the largest we have discovered. Josh Davis, writing for the Natural History Museum in London, UK, states, Megalodon's jaws could open wide enough to swallow two adults standing side by side. The reason we are aware of the Megalodon's amazing size is because of the comprehensive fossil record. According to fossil evidence, the Megalodon was an apex predator millions of years in the past, with most science believing that the monster went extinct roughly 2.6 million years ago. However, a new study has a different idea on the murky monster's mysterious demise. In a paper published, Scientists propose that the extinction date could extend another million years than originally thought. After examining the same data that had been used to date the extinction date originally, the researchers noticed faults in the findings. For instance, the fossils had imprecise dates, older dating methods, or had simply just been misidentified. Robert Bosenecker, a paleontologist at the College of Charleston in South Carolina, worked on the new study. He stated, after making extensive adjustments to this worldwide sample and statistically reanalyzing the data, we found that the extinction of the Megalodon must have happened at least one million years earlier than previously determined. Surprisingly, the decline of the Megalodon seems to happen at the exact same time the great white shark species began to thrive. According to a write-up in National Geographic, Scientists had believed that the Megalodon's extinction was associated with some sort of extinction event at the end of the Pliocene period, one example being a supernova that flung hazardous radioactive material across the planet. However, this new research shows that there were no significant changes or changes that were widespread enough to leave an impact on the Megalodon population. That is, except for the rise of the great white shark in Earth's waters. Great Whites, while not as big as Megalodon, are an apex predator in today's marine environment. Despite their smaller size, Great Whites may have been able to tackle younger Megalodons or those in adolescence. Scientists also believe that other changes to the planet's oceans could have given the Great White the slight advantage over the Megalodon species, causing the species to eventually fade out. Megalodons primarily ate small whales, but ever-decreasing populations meant fewer sources of food. Regardless of what truly happened, it's an amazing fact that great white sharks have managed to survive from the decline of the Megalodon until the modern day. Where have South Africa's great whites gone? False Bay and Gownsby are two bodies of water off the coast of South Africa that are hotspots for great white shark activity. However, in recent years, the sightings have all but vanished. Scientists quickly grew concerned at the sudden disappearance of the water's regular inhabitants, and research quickly began to determine the source. According to the publication Monga Bay, white sharks were a very common sight in False Bay, just one of the two bodies of water of interest. From a write-up, Shark Spotters reports that between the years 2010 and 2016, there were an average of 205 sightings a year, but in 2018, that number reduced to just 50 sightings. Not one sighting occurred in 2019. Thankfully, one sighting did occur in January 2020, the first in 20 months of zero activity. 
The reality is that we have way more theories than we have facts to support them at the moment, says Alison Cock, a marine biologist for South African National Parks who has been researching white sharks in Africa since 1998. Great white numbers are uncertain in South Africa. Some estimates have put the population total at 500, while others suggest 900. Regardless, the number is hardly indicative of a thriving species. Sara Andreotti of Stellenbosch University studies the genetics of white sharks around the South African coast. Andreotti's research has uncovered that sharks around the coast are actually just one group, which moves from location to location, breeding with one another. In her study conducted from 2009 to 2011, Andriotti believed to have identified 300 breeders in the population. The minimum to avoid inbreeding is 500, and according to Andriotti, our population was in real trouble already. So why did the great whites suddenly disappear from the South African coastline? Well, the answer might lie in the shark's pop culture cousin, the orca whale. Orcas are also present in the bodies of water that great whites normally thrive in. Scientists have identified two particular orca whales, named Port and Starboard, which were first spotted in False Bay in 2015. Orcas have slowly increased their activity in the area since 2009, and at this time the number of deceased broad-nosed seven-gill sharks began to show up in the waters off the South African coast. Alarmingly, these were the first records of orcas hunting sharks in South Africa. A paper was published on the first documentation of a novel feeding technique. Succinctly, the orcas had been using brute force to damage the shark's pectoral girdles. This allowed the orcas to bite out the shark's livers before leaving the rest of the carcass. Orcas do this because livers are incredibly high in fat, and shark livers equal roughly a third of each shark's body weight. After the first attacks, the seven gill sharks soon dispersed from the area. Despite being one of the world's biggest hotspots in activity for seven gills, the sharks were gone for a month. This pattern seems to match up to the Great White events post-2017. As the Great White sightings began to lower, a total of five Great Whites were found washed up on the coast of Garnsby, each of them missing their livers. The evidence of large teeth marks clearly pointed to the local orcas. While Port and Starboard were the only present orcas in the bay, researchers have given word of another orca in the area, resulting in continued drops in sightings. This behavior might point towards a different ecotype of orca, one that is primarily a shark eater. Reasons for this behavioral adaptation could stem from water temperature change due to climate change, as well as overfishing. Sharks discovered inside underwater volcano. In 2015, the strange circumstances of a group of sharks thriving within an underwater volcano went viral online. Researching the most active volcano on Earth, scientists were shocked to find a group of sharks living in the inhospitable depths. Due to the deadly conditions, specialized tech equipment with cameras were sent down to gather information on the sweltering sharks. National Geographic explorer and ocean engineer Brennan Phillips expressed this is a remarkable nature of discovery. He stated, There are a number of reasons why there shouldn't be anything living in there except maybe bacteria. Number one, it's very hot and acidic. And number two, it's very turbid. So the water is very cloudy. None of these things are good for fish. Whether they're good for sharks, that's up for debate. Yet we saw sharks that in between eruptions are darting in and out between the clouds of the plume. So that's a lingering question mark. But what do you make of these remarkable mysteries and discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.